Trota Bayesian stats. Page 147, 148. 147, 148. Example 14. Example 14. Okay. okay. And so I'm going to file open. And I'm going to open. I don't know if I can get them. File open. Well, if I can. Boy, we're having somebody. Oh, here it is. A document ODC. You have to go to the very top sometimes. Document ODC. There we go. And I'll find it. It's, uh, yeah, page 147 to 149 examples. And here we are. Okay. <clears throat> and what we've got are the three models. Now, Anna's model, I've got Y, D bin, pi 100, and the pi, um, and in this one I saved um, Y, D bin, pi 100, and then the pi is D beta, the 4.8, 19.2. Now, I, um, So, based on that, she got this, um, now you will also find that in all of these, y was equal to 26. This is the bottom of page 148, and they said out of the random sample of 100 folks in the sample, y was 26. So, I just put at the very bottom of this, I did list equal, y equal 26, and I'm going to go back and use that list equal y 26 in all of these. So, to walk through the models, Anna was the Y binomial, and her uh, prior was a D beta 4.8192.2. Bart used a Y D bin, a binomial, with a uniform prior, which would be a beta 1, 1. Chris, however, had a step function. So, with the step function, I had to do things a little bit differently, so here is the code for the step function. So what I did first, <clears throat> now the step function, I had the pies running um, from over various intervals. So the first thing I did was randomly generate the pi, and to do that generate the values of pi, I first generated, used a uniform distribution 0 to 1000 to get the numerator. And then once I do that, pi is simply numerator slash 1000. Now, in order, now note after the pi, it's a less than and a dash. It basically functions like an arrow. It is functioning like an arrow here. Then, once I do that, then I got my prior probability, which I call pi prior. Now, with um, wind bugs, you have what is called a step function. And that's how you want to do these step, these, um, piecewise functions. You use the step function. And the step function in WinBuds basically says if the argument is positive, the value of step is, is 1. If the argument is negative, the value of step is 0. It's an indicator function. So we'll use the term indicator function here. Um, so that's how I wrote the um, the g of pi function. It was that's how I set up the indicators, and so that gets me that prior probability, and then that prior probability goes in for y. So to run this, what I did is run each one of these models separately. So Anna and Brad, we Anna and Bart and Chris, so I'll run each one of these. So first we will do Anna. 
So we're going to do model, model specification. We're going to highlight Anna's model. So what we're going to do, we're going to do model and then highlight the left bracket. We're going to check the model. And you will see the new model will replace the old one. That's going to be the case when I've run something previously. So we're going to click OK. Then we need to load the data. So I'm going to go back down to this list down here. Go down to the list. And I'm going to highlight list in the left parenthesis. And I'm going to click load data. And I should see data loaded on the lower left window. Then I'm going to compile. Okay. Then I'm going to do gen init. Okay. Then once I do that, I'm going to go. Now options, we did output options earlier and we had that as log, which is what we want. So we're going to get out of that window. So inference, I'm going to go to samples. And I'm going to node pi. <clears throat> okay. Set. And finally, we're going to go back to model. Go back to model. And we're going to go update. I'm going to do 5,000 of these. And we're going to click update. Okay. Then, of course, we're going to go back and we're going to do pi. Click pi. And we get all the things that we want to get. Now, so if I want quick look at history, history, we see that our stuff looks pretty, um, lots of ju jumping up and down things, not a st strand sort of thing, so that's a good thing. Density, just to look at that, it ends up a bell. Kernel density, bell shapish. Stats. And we get from the stats, we get our um, mean standard deviation. Our Monte Carlo error has got an e to the minus 4. Um, small Monte Carlo error, that's a good thing. And then we got a confidence interval. And the coda again, coda, we click coda. And we're going to get, once again, coda index, coda for chain 1. And again, what I would do is... Um, <clears throat> If you want to save the individual values, file, save as, and save it as a text file, plain text file, and save it as, I've already got mine on here, so you just save it, and I call it Anna file. And that saves that as a text file which I can bring into SAS to do, to do things. So if you wanted to, say, recreate those graphs on page, the figure 8.3 graph on page 149, you would do the same thing with Bart, you would do the same thing with Chris, and you've got three files of codas, and you can bring all three of those into SAS, and then you can do, you can do whatever you need to in SAS to create one big data file. Sort them in and set yourself up. So that's again how you would do that. Now if you wanted to, so we'll close this example. Click off for a moment because I want to start another one.